What's up, Cooksy Mob? Hey, guys, so I kind of spaced this, but the Abu Dhabi World Supercross round is this weekend. So all of you guys having withdrawals, missing motocross, missing supercross, hey, we got a big race. This is the first time that I can ever remember. Maybe there's one, one that you guys know about that I don't know about, but I don't ever remember Abu Dhabi hosting a supercross. And let's not forget, this is the reinvigorated Supercross. This is World Supercross 2.0. They have changed ownership, and we're going to see kind of a new look. But don't judge them too much. Like I said, this season has kind of been a cluster, and the fact that they're still standing is nothing short of amazing. Adam Bailey and the guys have done an amazing job. So cut them some slack. And just remember, don't be down in this series. This series... It's why the American series, the SMX series, has been developed. We know how great that is. And guess what? That wouldn't have existed if we didn't have competition. So support World Supercross and help the competition raise the level. And they'll all get better. But I'm going to talk more about World Supercross. A little bit about J-Law is actually coming back. He hit me up and let me know he's actually racing arena cross. He's not just, you know, just goofing around at GNCC races. He's going to he's gonna come back and race arena cross. So that'll be fun. Um, and then a lot of you guys called me out on Ken Roxon saying that I made that up and that he really didn't say that thing about Dylan. Well, I got that directly from Ken, and I'll talk more about that. But guys, remember, Complete Racing Solutions. Coach Rob and the Coach Rob store, get your energy fuel. Energy fuel is such good stuff. It tastes good. It is the best energy drink, period. Helps me with arm pump, help me with cramps, help me with my, I kind of, after about an hour or so, I kind of get this like weird, like, um, almost like a, like a shaky feeling when I drink energy fuel, I don't get it. So, and then guys ride strapped, you know, ride strapped, the let's go branding goggles. Um, they're just such a cool company. Uh, check them out. Shirts, goggles, you name it. They got it. Um, Epic Garage Designs. Guys, Epic Garage Designs. Make your showroom look like Barrett Jackson. $17.95 for a two-car garage. Order it up. And if you got to ship something and you're tired of trucking companies being dicks and not having customer service, use Precision Transport. They're awesome. Precision Transport, they are everyone that I've talked to. You, a lot of you guys have already used them, and I appreciate that. So, yeah, go ahead. Use them. And just remember, customer service is not a lost art. So, let's get into this, guys. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say, that's the bad guy. So, World Supercross is breaking ground in Abu Dhabi. This is huge, guys. This is gigantic. Do you know how many people in Abu Dhabi just drop the amounts of money that just... The, the, money, the amount of money that falls out of their pockets could finance an entire season of some stuff. The fact that they're going over there and they're showcasing this badass sport in front of those people it could grow into something big and it, it, it's a big deal um in abu dhabi saudi arabia those of you who watch the tyson fury francis nagano fight in saudi arabia that part of the country is very interested in these types of events and if we can get if we can get them on board with supercross like they are with you know combat sports Trust me, it'll be big for the athletes. It'll be big for the sport. It's going to help a lot. I really do think that that's a, a good thing. And, and I commend Adam Bailey and the boys for going over there. Watch the race, buy the app, and support these guys. These guys are busting their asses to make this World Supercross succeed. Lesser men would have mailed it in by now, but these guys have stuck it out and they are fixing it. And like I said, don't judge them on this season. It's been a cluster this season the way they, with the change in ownership. Give them, give them, like I said, they started with the five-year plan. Last year doesn't really count. So give them four more years. Let them work this thing out before you judge it and trash it. That's just not cool. It's not cool. If you like the sport of dirt bike racing and you like the stuff in the United States and you like the MXGPs, this only adds to it. What else is going on right now? They have a new, a new, you know, a new set of management and they are going to, they're doing it the right way. Trust me when I say that they're, they're good for this sport. And I'm just glad I got something. I've been jonesing to watch something. And then I got a message from Jason Lawrence, Jason Lawrence. He said, he's going to come on and do an interview with me. I'm not holding my breath because well, it's Jason Lawrence, but the fact that he hit me up and told me he's racing arena cross. 
Yes, he's racing for Arena Cross for Phoenix Honda. I don't care if he doesn't even make the mains. I just like that Jason Lawrence is in a good place. We have a mutual friend, Chris Dang McAvoy, who passed away this year. And he had an amount of love for Jason Lawrence that, you know, they, they spent some good times. Chris was his team manager and mechanic back when in, in the glory days. And Chris would be super happy to see Jason Lawrence doing good. And that alone is why I am all in on Jason Lawrence. And like I said, everybody has their own issues. And the fact that it looks like he's got them under control and he's back in a good place and he's around the sport. And I love that we bring these legends back. I love that James Stewart's back around. I like Ricky Carmichael around, believe it or not. I think he sucks as an announcer and get him out of the announcer's booth. But I like to see these guys hanging around as long as they don't just milk the sport like Ricky does. Um, I like to see Jeff Stanton out there getting on the triumph. I, I, I like that type of stuff. Like I said, my only issue with Ricky is the fact that he screwed over Daniel Blair and he sucks at announcing. And I just, but I'll leave Ricky alone. I know a lot of you guys freak out when I make fun of Ricky. And the thing is, is I'm not making fun of just his announcing. He, he's, he's awful at it. I'm not making fun of the, the way he changes his words and stuff because I think that actually adds a little bit of flavor. You guys misconstrue that. What I'm making fun of is I get mad when he won't share the information. He'll say 75 words without actually giving you an opinion. He never gets off the fence because he doesn't want to piss someone off. He's such a coward when it comes to that. If he just let it fly like he's talking to his buddies, like James does, I'm cool with it. So enough with that topic. But yeah, Jason Lawrence, back racing legit races. And I'm, I'm just, I'm stoked for this. I, I don't even care how he finishes. The fact that he's heading to the Arena Cross Series is going to add a, a, an amount of attention that the Arena Cross Series hasn't seen yet. And there's some great people running that series. And that's another series I'd really like to support. And yeah, I, I, you know what? Motocross is in a good place when it comes to promotions and stuff. And you know, the e-bikes coming in, and I know a lot of you guys hate e-bikes, but I think there's a place for them to bring in new people. Um, people that ride e-bikes in their neighborhood can now relate to racing on the TV because they understand what it's like. It's like driving a car is nothing like NASCAR, but at least you understand driving. Uh, now these guys that ride these e-bikes will understand riding or just like me watching golf. I can actually watch golf. It's kind of boring, but I understand the difficulty of it. But if you've never hit a golf ball, it's really stupid. And so it will add that sort of an element. That's the element of e-bikes that, that it brings. And then also I want to touch back on the, uh, the Ken Roxon deal with Dylan Ferrandez. Yes, Ken Roxon did not want him on the team. He wanted to keep the team the way it was. He confirmed that to me. Kenny directly confirmed that to me. Um, and I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like I said, at first I thought, wow, what a dick. But then after thinking about it and kind of understanding where he's coming from, eh, I, I, I wouldn't have done it. I still think it's kind of a dick move, but I actually understand it. I'm not going to judge him for it. And I, I, what, I, what I had said is I text some people close to Dylan, my contacts over there, and I said, you know what? You want to you wanna break the internet? Send him, send Dylan. Uh, you know, rumor is I think he's going to Phoenix Honda. I've even heard Team Tedder. Um, I've heard they're in a the mix. I don't know. Until Dylan actually signs or announces something, who knows what? Because I've heard multiple deals were done and yet still nothing's done. It's just such a fluid situation and there's so many moving parts, especially this late in the game. But if he does sign with Phoenix Honda, send him over to Australia to go head to head with Ken. How great would that be? That would be so good for Dylan, for Ken, for the series, for the sport. Those types of storylines and how great would that be? to go over there with Phoenix Honda and battle Ken, who just kept you off of his team. What a great storyline. Those are the types of things that we need in this sport to get emotional attention. And yeah, that's what I want to see. And guys, remember, if you're selling your house and you're anywhere in the world and you need an agent, hit me up. I'm with Berkshire and Hathaway. And I have some platforms here to get a lot of eyeballs on your house to sell it. So even if you don't use the agent, if you allow me to refer you to an agent in your area, I will help that agent promote your place to sell it. So hit me up at chriscooksymedia at gmail.com and I'll get your place sold for you. And like I said, you'll see it promoted on this podcast, on this YouTube channel, on my Instagram. 
I use the tools available to, to advance the, my real estate career. And it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a big thing. We'll probably have a regular segment. If you got a really cool place with the motocross track, guess what? Your audience, regular people aren't going to care that you want to sell a place with a motocross track, but guess what? My audience does. So remember guys, hit me up and I'll catch you later. Remember subscribe because YouTube judges us by how many people subscribe. That's literally what that number does. It doesn't do anything other than that. So if you subscribe, I appreciate it. Thanks guys. Later.